Hello everyone, Toon World here. Hopefully you're all having a wonderful day whenever it is that you're watching this video. Today, we're going to be tackling my take on Gold Pride Punk post Cyberstorm Access. This Punk variant got a huge boost in power given the release of a new wave of Gold Pride names and is now potentially poised to be a great contender in the upcoming format. Thus, I'm very happy today to share with you some of my thoughts on how you can build this deck given the release of this new main set so that you can dominate your games wherever it is that you go. Remember to like and subscribe, it does help the channel grow. Otherwise, I'll get on with the deck profile. Alright, so as is natural with deck profiles, we're going to talk about the main deck monsters first. I'm going to showcase to you first my punk names, then the gold pride names, then the hand traps that I'm choosing to play. So, for punk names, we're playing one copy of Sherakusai, one copy of Wagon, one copy of Madam Spider, three copies of Zayamin, two copies of Deer Note, three copies of Foxy Tune, and finally two copies of Ogre Dance. So, three Zayman, three Foxy Tune, those should be self-explanatory. That is basically the crux of the punk engine. So no le no reason to play less than three. Two Deer Note, I think one is too little, even for a punk variant like this, since you do need the second copy a lot of times for follow-up. And then I think three is too much, given how tight space can be for this deck, as you will see. We are playing 41 cards barely scratching over the 40 card minimum. One Madam Spider, one Wagon, also self-explanatory. You need the one copy of Wagon for the field spell, one copy of Madam Spider to search a trap card. Share Kusai, one copy of Share Kusai because we need to access Rising Carp. I don't feel like two is quite necessary. I know some people are playing two, given that really this card usually feels like a one and done after you're able to access your Rising Carp you don't usually need the second copy. I guess there is merit to say that the second copy does come up if your first copy gets negated and you can't re-summon it from the graveyard to make Rising Carp, but one has proven fine enough. The two Ogrenants might be interesting. I know in past formats we were playing three, but I've elected to play two mainly because one, we're in a very drill heavy format and so that dissuades me from wanting to play multiple copies of this since this plays really heavily into Droll. Two, I had mentioned the fact that this deck is struggling at times to maintain a lot of space for your hand traps and engine without going too far over 40. And so my choice of cutting corners and able to keep the deck to a minimum or close to the minimum was cutting down on consistency. So Ogre Dance went down to two as a result. I might even consider cutting this down to one in the future, just because if you crunch out the numbers, your Punk Engine and Gold Pride Engine is still very, very consistent, and you might not really need that second copy to guarantee your plays going first. So, these are the Punk names. The Gold Pride names, we're playing one copy of Nitro Head, three copies of Captain Carey, two copies of Leon, and finally, our one copy of Friend, Rollerballer. So, only seven gold pride names. I don't think you need to play a vast number of gold pride cards in gold pride punk just because, again, the punk engine gives you access to the gold pride engine now through chariot carry. So, all these cards are more or less accessible through your punk engine already. It is nice to have extenders though, which is why we're playing three copies of carry, two copies of Leon. The level three bodies are nice to make chariot carry. Also, I think these are your best names. Sherry Carry for obvious reasons. And then Leon, I know some people might be only playing one copy of it post release of Cyberstorm Axis. I do feel like that isn't a perfectly great logic, mainly because this card with all the new names that we have is really nice, you know, great follow up. And even though it might seem awkward to open going first, it is still level three extender going first that lets you make Sherry Carry and then you can use it later on to do whatever you need to do. The one Nitro Head, I'm considering cutting this actually, putting it in the side instead based on some discussion I've had with Punk players recently 
I think Rollerballer is actually better than Nitro Head, which is why I might play this copy eight, or this card at two. The only reason why I'm playing Nitro Head at one right now is because I think the level eight extender can be beneficial in those other situations where you don't need the level five body. Basically, the fact that you can use this to make Harbinger or Dingrisu, which we're both playing, is nice. Also, this is, of course, your main way to stop Nibiru, or sorry, not Nibiru, your main way to stop evenly, and also your main way to win in the cash tier matchup a lot easier than you would have without it. The one rollerballer, absolutely amazing inclusion to have in this deck, being a level 5 body that can replace Deer Note if you do not have uh, access to Deer Note already is great, that's why I want to bump it up potentially to 2. Also, you do need it to access uh, Pinballer, which is a... I don't even need to explain how great that card is. So, these are your gold pride names. The hand traps, we're playing three copies of... I reversed it, but one copy of Driver. Imagine if we was playing three, we'd basically be playing side frames. One copy of Driver, three copies of Gamma, three copies of Droll, three copies of Ghost Ogre, and normally I would save this for the spells and traps, but I figured it, make, or it would make more sense to include it with the hand traps. Three infinite impermanence. So, three gamma, three droll, three ghost ogre. I think these are the best hand traps to play this format. Droll is one of the few cards that can stop all the combo heavy decks that are still running amok right now. Super heavy samurai, it stops the soul piercer loop. Uh, it stops sprite combo. It can stop cash tira for the most part. It doesn't quite stop pearly. That is one of the concerns that we have as a deck. The fact that that deck kind of trumps a lot of our engine at times, but yeah, I think Troll is still a great card to play regardless. And I guess that is scary for us as Gold Pride Punk players since our deck does search a ton, but that's just the state of the game. We have to play Droll and we have to worry about Droll, nothing more we can do about it. Ghost Ogre. So Ghost Ogre has a lot more viability versus, uh, say, Ash Blossom. You hit Wakaoshi, you hit Scarecrow in the Super Heavy Samurai matchup. You hit the purely um, continuous spells, you can hit Gigantic Sprite if that's still relevant, hit uh, Kashira Birth. So overall has proven itself as a much better inclusion right now. Ash can still get the job done, but it just doesn't feel as strong as Ghost Ogre. If you wanted to play Ash, you could replace some of these cards or you know tweak some of the ratios, maybe you'll play like two Ogre to Ash, not that I'm necessarily um, promoting that but I'm just giving you options. Three Gamma, uh, just being able to s destroy the monster on top of negating its effect is nice. This helps you play around Droll if your opponent isn't careful and chooses to Droll you while you have no monsters on field. For example, in the case of Ogre Dance, also great to protect your Rising Carp from Ash. So overall, great card. And in tandem with the Lambda that we are still playing, it is nice to use. 3 Imperm, this is my choice of effect negation. Some people are playing Veiler. Um, you could play Veiler mainly because if you draw that Veiler during your opponent's turn, maybe by Shekusai's life point costs, triggering Extreme Session when you go for Dragon or Amazing Dragon, that does have some merit, but I think Infinite Impermanence, just being able to function as a hand trap going first or second, but then also being able to act as an out to monsters going second, for example, a Baron, maintains its viability in this deck. So, oh, long rant out of the way. These are the main deck monsters and then Imperm, and I will get on with the spells and traps. Allow me to breeze through the spells and traps. We're playing three e Tally, one Extreme Session, Two better luck next time, one start your engines, one dangerous gabu. Three e tally, one extreme session, not gonna bother explaining it. One start your engines, I think the second copy isn't quite needed, usually if you get your full combo, you're probably winning already. And then the one dangerous gabu, I know you could play Nashi Warrior Surprise, but again, I like the fact that this card doesn't require a punk name, and effect negation is just as valuable as the pop, I know the pop can hit the pen scales in Super Heavy Samurai are the continuous spells of Pirelli, but it's fine as is. The two better luck next time, this is potentially controversial depending on how late we are into the format. So two copies, this is to play around Droll. Also your Punk Engine is consistent enough 
alongside your gold pride engine to access chariot carry which can then search this card so i didn't feel like it was necessary to maximize on this finally of course i did mention that we are trying to keep this card or sorry this deck as close to 40 as possible and so my choice of cutting corners was cutting down on consistency and this was a card that suffered the result so remember if you have any comments or questions about anything that has been presented in this video thus far remember to leave that down below otherwise i will get on with the extra deck before we get into the extra deck i just want to provide to all of you a friendly reminder if you haven't subscribed or liked the video already i would appreciate it if you could it does help a lot you know given the channel is small but it is growing and so the more we grow the better that we can achieve now that out of the way so one copy of rising carp is being played in the extra deck alongside one pinballer one asa one lambda one unicorn one shared carry one dingrisu one harbinger one double a zeus two dragon drive one star leon one dragite one amazing dragon and our beloved psychic and punisher so rising carp self-explanatory we're playing shared goose we're playing the fusion line we need this card pinballer i don't think you need multiple copies of pinballer since it will recycle itself it is a great card in tandem with rollerballer so you must play it asa so i was playing this last format and it didn't gain a lot of trash in last format even so i want to try it again this format just because all of the super heavy samurai names are technically earth names for the most part and so being able to recur those names for the sake of link plays and or sometimes extra deck synchro plays if you potentially have levels that line up given that there are tuners that work with this archetype relative to the super heavy samurai matchup that is nice so i've kept it in here for that reason lambda is in here for the side frame package you don't necessarily need to play it but i do like the option of being able to make lambda if i have enough extenders in hand to make any gammas i have in hand that would otherwise be dead live again unicorn this is just a generic level three or sorry link three uh monster that you can go into off of asa i think if you had to cut down on any spaces here unicorn and asa could be the most replaceable like if you want to play more xyz monsters more synchro options these two aren't set in stone chariot carry no real need reason to explain why we're playing this card uh why we're only playing one copy i don't feel like the third is quite necessary though i could be proven wrong in the future the fact that it returns itself to the extra deck is nice um the only situation where i could see this being required at more than one is if you go into the grind game and your first one gets outed but i think one is sufficient for now Dingrisu, amazing level eight monster gives you flexibility going second potentially a great body to set up going first if you want to prevent your board from being outed harbinger uh you can easily make this through the punk combo in place of making sherikusai plus dragon drive you just recur back a level eight body instead of sherikusai and then you can make titanic galaxy which is great against pearly and great against super heavy samurai you'll notice that i'm not playing photon lord the reason why is because I don't feel like Nibiru is something to be too scared of this format, given that both Super Heavy Samurai and Pearly can play around it pretty quickly. Um, Kashira versions that Turbo out Arise Heart and nothing else can play around that too, so on and so forth. So really, I'm not too scared of Nibiru, which is why I'm not playing it. Though if you want to shell out the money for it, you can, since being able to guarantee that your Gold Pride cards go off after your Punk combo goes off is nice. Zeus is in here, tie this in with Dingrisu or potentially Gold Pride Chariot Carry if you get to attack with it. Great disruption. Two Dragon Drive, I think two is still necessary. Um, having one for going first, a lot of times you need the second copy for going second, so we're keeping this in here at two. One Star Leon, your main level six synchro to go into. I have considered playing more level six synchros, though I think Star Leon has been sufficient enough for me. One Dragite, this is my choice of non-punk level 8 synchro. I do like it a lot still, given that you can make it live with Rising Carp and Grave. And if I double check right now the main deck, I think, what is it? 
Yeah, carry is also water, so you could potentially make Dragite with carry engraved, and this becomes a spell or trap negate. What amazing dragon. So yeah, you do need this card. It is going to be important for your bounce play going first, or of course, going second, you can use this to OTK. Finally, Psychic and Punisher are big bad of the deck. This is very easy to set up into a like 10k beater given how much life points you lose. So you gotta play it. This is the extra deck and I will get on with the side deck before making some concluding remarks. So the side deck is going to be variable since it's way too early into this new format to tell for sure what you want to have for your deck as options going into game 2 and game 3. My choices right now though, again take it with a grain of salt, I'm playing 3 Gamma Seal, 3 Bell, 3, or sorry, 2 Cosmic Cyclone, 3 Dark Ruler No More, 1 Nashi Warrior Surprise, and then 3 Evenly Matched. Gamma Seal is in here for Pirelli. You don't usually hit uh, all that much with your own hand traps against them. For example, I mentioned prior that Drill only hits them really during your turn where they're drawing their 6 cards. So you kind of need this card as an out to not only their Zeus, but also to their ex Pirelli Noir, which of course can become unaffected if they have certain requirements met. Ghost Bell, this is kind of just carrying over from last format. I don't know how great it is in this format. I guess you can stop Scarecrow from resolving. Uh, the main point of contention for this was that it was going to stop Branded in red last format, and it was great against the Branded matchup. Don't know how well it holds up this format, but I'm going to keep it in for now. 2 Cosmic, still has some use against trap based decks, also hits the continuous spell and the pen scales of Pearly and of Super Heavy Samurai respectively. Dark World No More, great way to out your Super Heavy Samurai opponent's board. Nashi Warrior Surprise, I just like having the one copy as an option to switch in over Gap Root if I need to. And then finally, the three evenly match, just a great blowout card against those trap decks and or any combo heavy decks that aren't prepared for it. This is my side deck, and I'll conclude the video with some concluding remarks, and yeah. In regards to the concluding remarks, I'm not going to spend too much time on them since you're probably here at this point just for the deck list and or if you are still watching, you were only here for the deck profile. So concluding remarks, this deck definitely going to be fun to play in the upcoming format. It's got a lot of strength. If you saw, for example, my recent combo video, you put out a very strong end board with a ton of draws in hand that could end up being hand traps. So. Really, it's going to be hard for a lot of decks to stop you if you get set up. The concern with getting set up though is the fact that as hinted prior, Droll is going to be a staple in this format which does hit us as much as it does hit the top decks. Also the best hand traps in Ogre and Gamma, those hit us just as well. So we're going to be having to struggle against those cards. And the fact that we aren't potentially as consistent and or as resilient as some of the decks at the forefront are, that does potentially neuter us in terms of how great we can go when we are playing games. Regardless, I do think this deck will, it'll, it'll make waves for sure. You know, I'm biased, of course, my channel is centered around punk, but I do see a lot of potential in the deck. This all though out of the way, Please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the deck profile. I do appreciate it. It does help the channel grow. Remember to comment down below anything that you might have caught that you want an elaboration on. Maybe you have suggestions for how I built the deck, or maybe you just wanted to leave me a kind comment. And I do always appreciate those. As you see, I always reply to my comments when I can. Leave a comment down below and we'll get to that. This is Toon World signing out. Gold Pride Punk post Cyberstorm Axis. Have fun playing it, and I'll cue the outro.